It is now the next day and now we can go ahead and get into what we're going to be replacing this uh, 190cc on the Toro Time Master with. This is a this is a CV224 made by Kohler and I actually got this from small engine suppliers. Um, I have no affiliation with them but uh, you can find your replacement CV224s from them for a pretty good deal. So I placed the order at night and then the next day my my box is actually here so uh, their shipping is very fast. It's like they're based out of uh, Missouri and um, it came in pretty, pretty well packaged. So uh, let's get this open and see what we got inside. I must say I'm really impressed with how they packages this uh, motor. They definitely went through the extra steps to make sure that it was packaged correctly and wouldn't get damaged during shipping. So uh, that's one thing to take note of in here. Um, they do a really good job taking care of your package before it gets to you. And this right here is the Kohler CV224. So this is a 224cc engine. Um, I know it's definitely bigger than the 190 that I had on here before. I believe the, the upgraded motor for the Time Master is a 223 if I'm not mistaken. But um, this will be definitely a power upgrade from what I had before. And from what I can tell from people who have the newer Time Masters, they also really like these motors and uh, they've done swaps on those as well. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip this motor over onto its uh, top side showing up so that way we can tap these holes right here. So from the factory, these do not come with tap holes that you can um, basically put your bolts into. So you're going to have to go and tap your own. They do have self-cutting, self-cutter tapping screws, but I'm going to go ahead and use bolts and uh, tap set. So I'm going to go with a 3 8 by 16 one inch bolt. I'm going to get that from the hardware store. And then I got a uh, tapping kit that I'm going to use. So we're going to go and tap out the ones that are shaped like a D. So that's going to be this one, this one, and this guy. These three right here are going to be the ones you're going to use to mount your time mat mount this motor to your time master. So we're going to go ahead and see how this 3 8 fits. So it looks like it fits pretty good. So we're gonna go get right on top of it. I'm gonna try to be as straight as possible and then start threading. Before you go and throw your old motor away in the trash and uh, forget about it forever, make sure you take off this uh, pulley system. So this is what your all your belts attached to. So you need to go ahead and reuse this on the new uh, the new motor. So uh, go ahead and pull this off and then add it to the new one. So after you get your holes tapped, uh, make sure you go and grab your pulley that was on the old engine shaft and attach to this one. So pay attention to the keyway, which is a slot right here, and your uh, pulley system will fit right on there. So as you, can, as you can see inside, there is a little slot that needs to line up with the slot that's on the shaft. Fits on, and then go ahead and insert your bolt. That's gonna hold this pulley on. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set this on the frame and see how this lines up. And here's roughly how the engine is going to sit on top of the Time Master. So we'll go ahead and line up our bolts. I grabbed some lock washers and some Loctite, the blue kind, just for an added sense of security. So uh, we'll go ahead and get this propped up so I can get my hand underneath there and tighten up at least one bolt and then we'll turn it on its side and try to get some more going. And that ladies and gentlemen is the finished product. This thing is dirty from paint and whatnot but the engine's on. Take a look at that. This right here is all your controls for your engine. So you pull it all the way back when you start it and you wanna to go to about the first click to keep it in running uh, form. So all the way forward is how you cut it off. So these motors don't come with oil, as I had said before. So you gotta go and grab some. They recommend Kohler's uh, 10W50. So from what I heard, it takes about 20 ounces of oil. So a little under a quart. So. We're gonna go to the store and grab some of that. We also did the pulley upgrade, as you can see here. Looks like it's on there pretty good. I don't really see there being any issues with that. So um, I gotta say, man, I'm pretty excited to try to get this thing started. I didn't show putting the bolts in. It's pretty self-explanatory. You put the three bolts in into the holes that you tapped. Um, it's kind of a pain, but you gotta get you gotta level, you gotta raise up the mower in order to be able to get underneath there and get your bolts back in. For this bolt over here in this corner. 
you need to go through the bottom frame. There's a hole that's about maybe about a half dollar that you can stick a socket and an extension through. And that's how you get to that bolt. I saw another video where they used a right angle uh, DeWalt tool to go in through here, but it was just as easy to go straight on into it from the bottom side. Here is the final product. As I said, I'm very happy with how this turned out. I can't wait to start it. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. And uh, next we'll get some oil, put some oil in here, get some gas. We'll start this thing up and uh, we'll see how this thing runs. So now that we have our motor on, I think it's time to go ahead and give this thing its first start. And then we'll, uh, the next video, we're gonna go ahead and do our first cut. I did add about 20 ounces of the Kohler uh, 10W50 is what they recommend putting in here. And it takes about 20 ounces, so less than the quart. Um, it's kind of hard to find. You kind of have to go to like to a tractor supply or some kind of place that services lawnmowers. You can't really find it at your local Napa, AutoZone, or O'Reilly's, so keep that in mind. You could use something similar if you want, but I just went with what Kohler recommends since this is a brand new motor. I don't want to put any damage on it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and pull this uh, starter and uh, let's see how it runs. Now the first step to get this to run is you need to take this yellow lever, pull it all the way back. So I can't go back any further. Pull this and then once it starts, you go up to about the middle position and then you can go ahead and let this run like normal. Pushing this all the way forward as it is. So right here is in this running position. When you push this lever forward is how you actually turn it off since you no longer have the start stop button being active. So let's go ahead and start this up. So as you can see, everything seems to be running properly. I went ahead and engaged the blades just to make sure that the pulleys were done correctly as well. Everything started up just fine, is running just fine. And uh, next video is gonna be us going ahead and cutting our grass. Um, I let the grass grow for a while so I can really see how well this cuts with the uh, new motor on here. So uh, stay tuned for the next episode and I will catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.